you know, and, and they, they always try to, like, say, well, what's next? Crystal meth? So we legalize this? When's the last time you're ever going to, you know, when are you ever going to see them having, like, a big freedom march or a, a free the meth march? People love marijuana. It's on a different level. And, you know, and that just reminds me that we have, like, 420 day coming up. And, you know, not that I'm into any kind of numerology or anything like that, but, as you know, uh, April 20th is, like, the big day for marijuana smokers. And we're trying to get screenings going all over the country, including we're going to be at the Toronto Freedom Festival up there on 420. So I just wanted to shout out to everybody who wants to set up a 420 screening to get a hold of us. It would be great. We'll Absolutely. Now, now, Kevin, separately, though, um, and I want to go to some calls in a moment, dealing with marijuana, the establishment is clearly losing the war. So what Obama has done is they're going into the state saying, fine, you can have some dispensaries, but you can't have a 1,000 dispensaries in your city. You can only have 75. And then select people get to have those dispensaries. So it's another monopoly being set up. No, exactly. I mean, it, and it's probably who all is going to, you know. I mean, I don't, I don't know for a fact, but you know the people that are going to be left standing you know, they're going to be the ones that are going to have to be buddying up to these people or something. I mean, it's And then that will drive up the price of marijuana again and keep the illegal market going. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, all the all the street dealers, I you know, I know a handful of street dealers, especially ones I've interviewed for the thing. I mean, they are they are happy, 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 happy about all these dispensaries being shut down because they have lost all their business. You can't, you know, go into the corner to buy your marijuana from the crack dealer uh, was the norm in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, no more. Why would you go to the corner to buy marijuana from some creepy guy when you know you can get the best of the best at some store with well lit with security guards up front? Well, the globalists want to keep everything in the shadows so they can control it and get the money uh, out of it. Let's talk to anti federalist from Georgia. You're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, guys. I uh, wanted to make a comment first about the film um, American Drug War. I wanted to say that it's a uh, one of the, if not the only film I've ever seen on the drug war, it wasn't apologetic. It didn't really go after um, the medical marijuana, but actually went after the real issues about the actual drug war and the government's uh, involvement. But my question is, you had mentioned before when you were on the show about some of the dispensaries being uh, having uh, feds in control of them, or at least some of them working with the with the federal government. And I'm just curious what your thoughts are as far as them trying to. Uh, I guess cultivate a kind of Monsanto kind of um, uh, commercialization if it were to be uh, decriminalized. Oh, yeah, and the big cigarette makers have gone into California and are buying up all the key growing area. They're clearly getting ready to have it where the cigarette makers have it. They can manipulate the genetics. They can add chemicals to it. Kevin? Well, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of word out amongst the growers that I know that uh, yeah. that there's probably only going to be a small gap of time for all these people that have spent their whole lives creating all these strains and all that for, from the time that it's legalized to the time that major corporations take it all over. There's probably going to be about a one-year slot in there for all these people to basically cash in on the last 20 years of their, of their work. Um, and that's sad, but that's what everybody thinks is really going to happen. You know, giant corporations will swoop down and take over this whole thing. And so it's still really going to be illegal. Select corporations will be able to do it, and they're still going to put your kids in jail if they catch them with it. We've got to have real decriminalization, not the corporatization of right. this. And a lot to do with strains, too. There's a lot of word out saying that, you know, the government will now have certain strains that you're allowed to have. And if you're caught using, you know, illegal strains, you know, it'll be the kind of thing where, you know, they'll, they'll confiscate your marijuana and test it. And if it's not the right kind of marijuana, you can get in trouble. If it's not the government-approved strains, like the government will own the patents on, like, you know, a certain amount of strains. And you know Monsanto's going to come out with a Prozac strain or something. I mean... Of course. They're, I'm sure they're, they're working on it right now. There's no telling what all... You know, they're going <laughs> to... Exactly. They'll, they'll, it'll have the same exact effect, but they'll get all the pot smokers to, like, take Prozac anyways, right? Let's talk to Ruth in Louisiana. You're on the air, Ruth. Yes. Hello, Alex. I've been praying for you every day. Thank you. Uh, I will tell, well, I have two, two comments. One's personal. But the first one is, if it wasn't for marijuana in 2000, I would be dead. Really? 
I got a condition called cyclic vomiting syndrome, which is migraine in the stomach. I already had migraines all my life. But I went down to 85 pounds, couldn't eat, couldn't do anything. I just finally told my husband, you got to go find me some, which he did. Did it late at night because the children were small at the time. I didn't want them to know what I was up to. And it saved my life. I was able to eat, keep my food down, got my weight back. But now I have to take morphine for the rest of my life, and unfortunately I have to be tested every month. Well, let me expand on that. Go ahead, Kevin. I said move to California. Yeah, no, you're you're right. It's real sad. I just went back to Texas not too long ago, and I have some extremely sick family members and relatives there. And it just breaks my heart where I'm just like going, oh, my God, you guys, you know, you know, First of all, yeah, smoking is not good for you, but for certain things like nausea, uh, you've ever woken up in the middle of the night with, like, heartburn or really horrible stomach ache, it, taking a pill or putting anything like that, smoking is a really good way, um, or vaporizing is a really good way of, of taking a drug for nausea. It, it bypasses. Well, Ruth, I appreciate your call. Let me just say this. Uh, dealing with the nausea, that is the medically approved, the feds even admit, that marijuana is amazing for people that have chemo, that can't hold food down. And I don't have a lot of migraines. I think they're triggered by pollen because the only times I have them was when five, six years ago, four years ago or so, I started having them a couple times a year because I would go on these long bike rides when the cedar was dropping two or three times a year, and I am allergic to the cedar pollen, and I would breathe so much of it that... One time, I got totally dizzy. It was a migraine. Pulled over. I was vomiting on the side of the road. You know, you can't, I mean, just it, hellish. And uh, so the, those are the type of migraines I have where you're just vomiting and vomiting and vomiting. And it's it's a level of pain I've never experienced. And uh, you know, that's a good idea. Maybe I should. But luckily, it hardly ever happens because I don't ride bikes when the cedar's out anymore. Uh, because I figured out every time I would do that in heavy cedar, it would, I would just breathe so much of it, it would literally just make my brain have an autoimmune response to all that pollen in my sinus and felt like I was dying. Uh, but uh, maybe that's the answer. But then they, I have, have, they, they have vaporizers now these, where you can, actually, you can actually use these things in a movie theater and no one will even know that you're using it. It's, it's absolutely amazing uh, some of the new little gadgets they have out to be able to use marijuana. Well, let me tell you, the worst pain I've ever felt is a migraine. You ever had a migraine headache, Kevin? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I get them all the time. Oh, really? Not, well, not all the time, but, I, yeah, I know what a migraine is. Sure. Oh, my God. I'm sure. God, how could, how could Alex Jones not get migraines unless you're just built out of steel or something like that? I can't. Listening to you gives me a migraine someday. I can't imagine all the stress. <laughs> oh, great. I can <laughs> no, see I mean that in a good way. Listening like, to Alex Jones a... gives you, will guarantee give you a migraine. No, no, you're out there fighting the fight so all of us lazy slobs can lay around. Yeah, but... The first time I had a migraine, I was about 25, and my girlfriend was over, now my wife, I was 26, and I thought I was dying. And I called my dad, and I said, I'm dizzy, blurred vision, I'm throwing up, this is the worst pain of my life. He said, you got a migraine, son. And uh, he was right, but uh, my, whoo, people that have migraines every day, I don't know how they deal with it. Does the medical dad, evidence show that it helps, um, that marijuana helps migraines? Because I've read that. For some people, uh, you know, um, yeah, definitely. It, it, it's di different strains for different people, all different types of ways of doing it. I think uh, for some people, for headaches, actually ingesting it might work better than smoking it. I mean, it's just, it's just different. I mean, it's the kind of thing where you have to kind of find out, like, what works for you. But the good thing is, is that you can expect you can just safely experiment without really risking anything to kind of find out, like, you know, do you want to be high? You don't want to be high. Do you want to be sleepy? Do you want to be awake? Do you, you know, just all the different things that you can kind of feel your way around to, like, finding what works for you in a very safe fashion. And that's, that's like, the, the main thing that doctors and all these people that don't want to see all these, uh, uh, you know, they don't want cures. They just want the pharmaceutical companies want to just be able to just treat everybody's symptoms. You know, and they don't want to cure anything. And that's, you know, going back to the Codex Alimentarius you're talking about. 
We're going to take some more calls, folks. I want to encourage you to get the DVD, How Weed Won the West. It's even more hardcore. It exposes government drug dealing, how they want to come after vitamins and minerals, and the state's rights violation, How Weed Won the West, available at Infowars.com, or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Let's go to David in California. David, you're on the air. Hey, Alex, how you doing? Good. Hey, I just wanted to share a little bit uh, some of the fam my family's struggles. Uh, one of my cousins, actually, from a little kid, was just this immense rage. And they went to the doctors, and the doctors gave them all sorts of drugs. He was on Ritalin, Prozac. I mean, there was probably half a dozen to a dozen of adult-strength drugs given this five- and six-year-old. And it wasn't until they got a prescription for marijuana that he basically said the traffic jam in his head just cleared away.